What's up everybody? Today I'm in the garage filming with this, my 1999 C43 AMG that I bought for only $200. If you haven't seen the first video I made on this car, I'll put the link in the description below. I highly recommend you check that out. For all of you who have seen the first video on this car, you know that this car is somewhat of a basket case. It runs and drives surprisingly really well, but over the course of 18 years and 10 owners, not including myself, this car has been pretty much destroyed with someone's poor attempt at a Euro body kit that consists of different fenders and tons and tons of body filler. In that first video, I asked all of you what you think I should do with the C43. Now I had a ton of comments, which was awesome. Some people said spray it with a bunch of nitrous, turn it into a drift car, strip it for parts and make some money on it. But the overwhelming majority said either do a full restoration on the car or race it in the 24 hour lemons race. More on the lemons race a little bit later in the video. In today's video, we're gonna explore a little bit more of the history of the C43 by way of a visual inspection. Now I've lifted the car up in the air and I've taken a couple wheels off and I'm gonna show you some of the mechanics of this car and some issues with them. Now it's not all that bad. This car's in actually pretty decent mechanical condition, especially considering it has 178,000 miles. Of course, I'm gonna show you a ton more hackery that's been done from underneath the car that is definitely sure to entertain. And then at the end, I'm gonna show you sort of a big problem with this car that in my opinion makes it very clear what direction this car should go in. The front brakes on this car are in excellent condition. They stop the car very well, they don't make any noise, and they don't produce any brake dust. If you take a look at the top of the rotor, there isn't really much of a ridge at all. I measured these rotors and they come in at 27.8 millimeters minimum factory spec is 26 millimeters. Now if we take a look at the brake pad on the car and zoom in, you can see that these have at least 50% life left. There's really not much to do here on the front brakes, I'm definitely leaving them alone. Here is the upper control arm and the ball joint on the upper control arm is in fantastic condition, no play whatsoever. Much to my surprise, the outer tie rods on this car, both sides are in great shape, no play as are the lower ball joints. They have no play as well and do not need to be replaced. It's starting to become very clear that one of the 10 owners of the C43 replaced a ton of parts in the front end. Even these lower control arm bushings don't have any play in them whatsoever. Take a look at this. These are actually brand new looking lowering springs and the car still has factory Bilstein shocks and they're not leaking. The car rides really nicely. Okay, we're almost done with everything on the car that's in good shape. Now we have to take a look at the steering linkage on the car. This has all been replaced semi-recently. It's totally tight and check this out, even the gearbox isn't leaking. Now Mercedes was a little bit late to the game with rack and pinion steering as it didn't come out till 2001 on the C-Class. Also take a look at the steering shock. I removed one of the bolts to show you. Even the steering shock's not bad on this car. Some had mentioned in the previous video they thought the engine mounts were going bad on this car, and I'll admit this amount of movement is a little bit excessive, but if you take a look at the engine mounts on the C43, you'll see that they're fairly new and not leaking any fluid. Considering I paid $200 for the car, I think I'm going to leave these alone for a little while. Here we're looking for engine oil leaks, and honestly we're really not going to find too many active leaks as this is all pretty dry. If we follow it to the AC compressor, you will notice some wetness that's actually power steering fluid leaking from here. It's a $5 seal in between the reservoir and the pump, so no big deal. Check this out. The rear main seal isn't leaking, which is great because you have to take out the transmission to get to that part. Now really, engine oil leaks on this car, not a huge concern. Sometimes you have the valve covers that leak or the upper breather chambers that leak. Sometimes you have this, which is the engine oil cooler that has a few seals in there that get dry and they leak but nothing really all that expensive to fix. This is something I wanted to clear up from the last video. Some had commented they thought this car didn't have any air filters. This is the air box, and as you can see here, there are k and air filters in here. Now they're sucking in hot air because the car is missing a couple of tubes that would go right here, and then there's normally a plastic cover that covers up most of the engine. Okay, enough with everything that's not broken on the C43. Let's get to the good stuff. Now, if you'd seen the first video on this car, you know that the fan and the shroud and the radiator all kind of destroyed themselves. So if you haven't seen that video, I highly recommend you check it out. When I first bought this car, I had to add a quart of trans fluid. It had a little bit of a delayed engagement. I wasn't too surprised to find this. 
This is the shifter cable. It goes in the back of the transmission. There's a couple O-rings in there, and sometimes they tend to leak. They're very cheap and they're very easy to replace. Now, typically, you would want to replace the transmission mount as it's covered in fluid and the rubber can be compromised, but in this case, it's still pretty strong, and considering it's a $200 car, I'm going to clean it up and call it a day. Continuing on with transmission leaks, we have a very important part of the car. That little yellow sleeve there is a $10 part that will leak transmission fluid both externally and, more importantly, internally, all the way through the wiring harness and to this. This is the electronic control module for the transmission. This part is very, very expensive. I've gotten away with cleaning a few and they've worked fine, but if you're looking to buy a Mercedes of this vintage, definitely use one that's soaked in fluid as a bargaining chip is you have to plan for the worst that you may have to replace this. Here we're taking a look at the differential. It's leaking. Don't worry, I'll get to those horrible welds in a second. Uh, the diff is leaking. It's coming a little bit from the side seal and also the rear cover. Very inexpensive as far as parts, but you do have to remove the entire differential. So this is probably something on a car like this that you would just top up and double check the fluid every once in a while. All right, it's time to take a look at all the hacked up stuff underneath this car. We have to start off with the exhaust system. Uh, this is actually kind of a positive. This has a MagnaFlow muffler, which explains why this car sounds so good. And if we travel back here, we can see some of the welds, if you even want to call it that. Take a look at this thing here. Yeah. And then if we move on back to this hanger, look at this. They welded this to the bottom of the car. And look at the welds. Uh, I mean, this is just disgusting. Now, if we look at the tailpipe, uh, this is actually melting the bumper. Uh, this is so misaligned that it is just melting away the rubber on the bumper. This side as well. So not too much thought went into this system. Uh, look at that hanger. Also not the best. And there's one of those again. Uh, so yeah, this exhaust is really hacked up. Now let's take a look at the O2 sensors on this car, specifically the wiring. Now, I'm pretty sure the person that did the wiring on this car has to be a residential electrician because these wiring connectors, definitely not automotive. This is just horrible. I can't believe that the check engine light on this car wasn't for an O2 sensor. So, pretty disgusting. This video would not be complete if I didn't show you a ton more of this body filler work that they did on this car. Now these are the ground effects and they just loaded it up to make them wider I guess. Now take a look at this work. There is so much filler in there. It's all flaking away. I don't know how old this is but regardless this is a very very low quality job. If we move on over here check it out. Look at that. It is just flaking away. Just gross. I can't believe anyone did this to this car. They could have just left it alone. They look awesome with regular stock ground effects. What you're going to see next is going to make it very clear in what direction this car should go in, and that all has to do with rust. Rust has weakened the area around the factory lift points so much so that they've pushed through the floor. Now, there is no doubt that this can be repaired. There are plenty of older cars that go through restoration projects with new floorboards or patch panels, and all that is totally possible with the C43. But at what point do you stop? This car has 178,000 miles which really takes it out of the running of ever being a true collectible. If a restoration is out for the C43, that only leaves one option. It's something I am really, really excited for, and that is the 24-hour Lemons Race. Now, if you have no idea what the Lemons Race is, don't worry. I didn't have a clue when I saw it mentioned a few hundred times in the comment section what a Lemons Race was. It's obviously a play on the world-famous Le Mans Race in France, Except instead of using really, really expensive professional race cars, they use $500 or cheaper beaters just like this car. Now, I'm not going to pretend to know a ton about the Lemons Race. This is all really, really new to me. And I actually had a subscriber reach out to me. He lives locally. He's raced in it twice with an old E36 BMW. In speaking with him and in doing research online, I've come up with kind of the cliff notes to tell everybody out there what this race is all about. Now, this is an endurance race. I don't believe it's all 24 hours, though. The one in Michigan that's coming up in October is actually split up between two days. The first day you race about eight hours, and the next day you race about five hours. And the goal of the race is to complete as many laps as possible. Whoever comes out with the most laps completed wins the race. So if you break down, it's okay. You can fix the car and get right back up on the track. 
Now, this race requires at least four drivers and I believe up to six, and then you can also have a pit crew. That way you can split the load for the race. Now, when I say that $500 or cheaper cars are allowed in this race, that means the cost of the car and all the mods and repairs you do on your car. It all has to be below $500. Now, that does not include any safety items and they require a lot of safety as this is a real race and you can get seriously injured. So you do have to have a full roll cage, a full complete racing suit, a fire extinguisher, battery cutoff, and a whole bunch of other things in order to race. You can sell pieces of your car off as long as this is all documented and legit, you kind of like have to have a build book for this race. As long as you can prove that you sold, let's say a seat for $200 and that's what paid for, let's say your new radiator like this car needs, you're totally fine. You can actually build up a bunch of credits to use for modifications and repairs. Another reason why this car is awesome for this race. Now, I don't know how nuts I would go with modifications. This car is already awesome. It was built for the Autobahn. It's an old school AMG car. It handles pretty well. It's lowered already. It has a factory engine oil cooler. It has a factory external transmission cooler. I mean, this thing is set up ready to rock. So clearly I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm just really excited about this race. The community seems awesome. It seems like a total blast. Right now, what I'm looking for are some partners on this car. Now, I'm looking for a shop to help out with the roll cage. Maybe you're looking for some really positive exposure online. I can definitely help with that. Anyone who has parts, any leads on parts, really anything that can help me with this build over the next few months would be excellent. And of course, I'm gonna document everything in my videos, everything that I repair on the car, everything that I modify, all the roll cage stuff, everything is gonna be right here. So if you're into this kind of stuff, definitely subscribe and definitely follow these videos. Now, before I do anything to the C43, I have to get the blower off of the E55 so modifications can start on this car. Fall is right around the corner, which means cold air is around the corner, and this car's gotta run a mid to low 11 second quarter mile time this year, so definitely stay tuned for the build on this car. For anybody new and checking in for the first time, please consider subscribing. I would absolutely love to have you. And to all my current subscribers, thank you so much for watching all my videos. I really appreciate it. As always, have a fantastic day, and I will see everybody in the next video.